Welcome back! It seems that rather than just helping people in this game, we're also helping animals, like these bees here, who uh, gave us uh, a honeycomb in return. Yummy honey! Can we eat that? Graham has no desire to put the dirty honeycomb in his mouth, no matter how tempting the honey may be. Apparently not. Good thing too, because if we could, the game would also be unwearable. And there's a stick on the ground here. Graham notices a large stick lying on the ground near the old tree. Graham bends down and picks up the large stick from the ground. Might be useful. I'm just going to save here. Let's uh, keep heading west, according to Cedric. <laughs> Nothing but a hot, dry desert for the west. Most people avoid it because there are bandits out there. Ooh, if you insist on going, I'll wait for you here. Okay, well, Cedric apparently doesn't want to go into the desert. And neither do I really at this point. Maybe later, but not yet. So I'm just uh, gonna go south, see if that takes us anywhere. Oops. Too bad. Even the sting of such a small creature can prove deadly. Yeah. You can't go there. <coughs> you can go into the desert, and of course we will have to, but uh, let's check out uh, the remaining area here first. So, if we can't go south, let's head north instead. A bully of a dog terrorizes the poor ants as he playfully digs at their large anthill. Seems like it. Wait, don't you have to warn me about it, Cedric? Ooh, Graham, that dog looks mean. Thank goodness we have you here to point these things out. You're about as useless Councillor Troy. A colony of large ants parade up and down a huge anthill built amid some scrubby bushes. A mangy old dog digs playfully at the huge anthill while the poor ants scurry about frantically. Well, I guess we should uh, help the ants like we helped the bees. So what can we use to um, lure away the dog? But this stick. Doggy, wanna play fetch? Actually, let's see if he kills us if we get close. I'm not entirely sure, actually. Ooh, Graham, that dog looks mean. Okay. He actually doesn't kill us. I'm surprised. Let's try the stick. Here, boy! Allow me to introduce myself. I'm King Anthony the Great. May I ask who you are? Why, certainly. I'm King Graham of Daventry, and this is my friend Cedric. We're seeking a way to cross the Great Mountains to the ocean on the other side. That is a very perilous undertaking. I wish you would reconsider. But if you shall not... In return for rescuing our home from that flea bitten cur, I wish to offer you our help, if for chance you may ever need it. Thank you very much, King Antony. Cedric and I appreciate your kind offer. We look forward to meeting you again. What could they possibly do for us? I don't know. Is that a new dance, Graham? The Bugaloo? Seems to be something to the north here, but I'm uh, gonna stick to my usual methodical approach and uh, go back east from here first. And actually, that dance is called the Ants in Your Pants dance. Yes, I know I usually say dance, but it wouldn't rhyme otherwise. What do we have here? An old grandfather gnome sits contentedly on an old stump and smokes a large pipe while watching his grandson at play. 
An old gnome! Related to the gnome in Daventry, perhaps? Who knows? I can't look at this. Sitting on a stool oh. in front of his house, a young gnome happily plays with an exquisite marionette. The entrance to the small house is through a crudely constructed door. Utilizing fallen logs, a gnome has built a little forest home. Let's talk to the gnome. Excuse me, sir. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to bother you. I was just noticing your son's marionette. It's very interesting. Where did you get it? It's grandson, not son. And I made it for him. Why do you care? I just wanted to comment on its artistry. It's very well done. I don't suppose it could be bought. If it could, the price would be very steep. I reckon you couldn't afford it. Now, leave me and my grandson be. He's not the friendly type, is he? Graham attempts to speak to the young gnome, but the boy seems to be very shy and doesn't answer. Cedric seems to be quietly contemplating their current situation, and so is not inclined to indulge in conversation right now. Okay, okay. Well, as we can find something to offer him in trade for the, uh... Marionette, we're not getting that. And why would we want the marionette? Well, maybe the uh, toy maker in town would be interested in that and would take it in trade for that sled. That's how adventure games work, after all. What do we have here? You'd better stay away from him, then. You're so annoying, you'll just drive him further into depression. What a wonderful bluebird. It could almost make Graham happy again, if it wasn't for his family. <laughs> Don't be such a downer, narrator. Graham feels the eyes of many creatures upon him as he follows a meandering path through the thick wood. Upon a fallen log sits a dashing young prince, who looks very sad and confused. Let's try and talk to him. Uh, excuse me, young man. Sorry to bother you, but I couldn't help but notice you sitting there on that log. I was wondering if there was anything wrong. Why, yes. As a matter of fact, there is. I've been searching everywhere for my fiancée. She's a beautiful princess with long golden tresses, fetching blue eyes, and smooth creamy skin. Have you seen her anywhere about? No, sorry, I haven't seen anyone like that. That's what I figured. No one has seen her. I bet that a witch who lives in the dark forest had something to do with her disappearance. I'll keep an eye out for her. If I see her, I'll let her know you're looking for her. I would appreciate that. Well, I guess I'd better get back to looking for her. I'm not ever going to find her just sitting around here. Thanks for your concern. And he leaves. Hopefully we can help him later. If you walk to the south, you'll find the town bakehouse. Oh, I've already been there. Ooh, there's nothing but a dark, scary forest to the north. Cedric is too busy looking around. Dark, scary forest? That sounds right up our alley. So let's try and go there. Nice touch, by the way, that uh, when you get close to, uh, to the bluebird in the uh, makeshift bird bath, he flies away. Aha. Uh -huh. That does look uh, rather foreboding.
The sign seems self-explanatory enough. Enter at your own risk. The wide dirt path ends at a crude warning sign placed before an ominous looking forest. Beyond the sign, the path narrows to nothing more than a root and snarled trail. Cedric perches nervously on a tree limb at the edge of a gloomy forest. I'm sure he has nothing good to say about it. Back to the east is Crispin's house. Cedric seems... Really? Well, that's just weird. Right. Seems Crispin... Crispin... Lee lives right next to the entrance to this dark and forbidding forest. That makes no sense whatsoever. Well, I guess uh, we have to go in there and see if uh, there's anything we uh, can do in there. Anything interesting to find. Ooh, no! Ooh, I'm not going in there! Can't you read the signs? Come on, Cedric. There might be something important in here. Go if you want to. I'll wait here. Why am I not surprised? Cedric never goes anywhere with you. Numerous roots, rocks, and ruts choke the narrow forest path, which branches either to the right or to the left. Hmm. What's with all the frogs? Numerous roots rock. It seems to Graham that there is an unusually large number of toads in this forest. Okay, toads, whatever. Let's uh, follow the path, see where it takes us. Um. Well, that explains that. That old witch caught Graham totally off guard. Right. That's not a good thing. Okay, so it seems that unless we have some way to protect ourselves against uh, that witch, which, uh, by the way, was also mentioned by the uh, prince we just saw. Um... Uh, then we have no way of getting into uh, the forest there. So let's head west uh, instead, but we'll do so in the next video.